Okay, welcome back to uh, Project 2. This is the video for Lesson 4. We're working on uh, Part 2 of Project 4. And basically in Part 2 we're going to take what we did in Part 1 and expand on it a little bit to um, actually uh, add the constants and equations uh, for each layer of the atmosphere to the respective blocks of code in uh, that we set up in Project 1. Okay. And I still don't have them all set up in this demo code I'm doing. This is a bare bones demo. Um, you know, I don't have my F print F statements in every one. I'm just showing the bare bones of uh, the ideas, and and you need to go through the handout and complete and make sure that you're meeting all the requirements uh, stated in the handout. I did add in a third uh, altitude band here just to expand it a little bit. Uh, so I've uh, got the end of the lower stratosphere, the upper end of the lower stratosphere here. And I added in another else if statement to account for that. Okay, so uh, now we need to go through and uh, add the constants and equations from table one and two to the blocks of uh, code. So if I scroll down here, these are the constants that I'll need. Whoops. Okay, and um, in English units, and there's the constants in metric units. Yeah, so it's about this time where I need to decide which unit system I'm going to work in for calculating all these atmospheric uh, properties. And uh, what you don't want to do, or, or I guess what you could do, is add in um, all the constants for both units uh, systems and, um, and then actively in each altitude band decide which uh, units, check to see which units you're in, and do the appropriate calculations. Or you can just pick a unit system, do all the calculations in the whole script in that unit system, and then if the user is asking for the other one, just convert the numbers at the end before you output them. And that's the more efficient way, so that's the way we should do it. So in uh, my case, I'm going to pick the uh, English system. So I need to put in these uh, constants in each uh, altitude band. So in the first altitude band here, I would come in and declare a constant uh, T1 and I need to add a good comment here with units and also a TH uh, same thing now uh, look this is where errors happen because I'm looking over here to the left and I'm typing in a number by hand over here and in between those two locations is my human brain and that's where things get messed up so instead of uh, typing them in, I'm going to come here, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to copy and paste it in. And it didn't copy, let me try that again. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and I'm going to add another good comment uh, after that. Okay, and maybe you're asking yourself right now, uh, wait a minute, can we put a number like this, uh, you know, scientific notation e to the minus 3 in the code? And the answer is the same answer as everything else in MATLAB. If you're not sure about it, just test it. So I'm going to highlight this, and I can either punch F9, or I can right-click and evaluate selection in the command window. I'm a big uh, keyboard user, so I'm going to press F9, and then I'm going to go over to my command window, and it's an invalid expression, because, um, and, and it's uh, highlighting the E there. And before you go too crazy and start to try to change all the numbers from scientific notation. Let's get rid of the space here so that it sees it as all one number and let's try it again. Press F9 and now it recognizes it as a number. Uh, I'm in the wrong format here so it looks like negative 0, 0.00 but if I do format uh, long then obviously I can see a lot better what's going on. So maybe I need to stay in that. I'll go back to format short for now and it still helps me to see what's going on. Okay, so uh, the bottom line there was, you know, reduce the possibility for errors by copying and pasting numbers where possible. And you can even try some, and I'm going to write another good comment here. Okay, and you can even try some crazy things like, let's uh, copy and paste uh, all of these in my code and see what happens. Sure enough, there's a list of numbers. Okay, uh, MATLAB does a pretty good job of interpreting stuff on the clipboard and now I could go through and set um, all of these equal to T1 so okay, 
and put a T1 on every line and put a semicolon at the end, and then I could drag and drop them into the right place where they go in each altitude band. That would be ever so slightly faster than doing it the other way. And ever so slightly faster is the same as faster, so that'd be a good way to do it. Uh, same thing with the other ones. Now if I copied and pasted this whole table, I'd probably end up with a little bit of a mess here, so yeah, that'd be a little bit harder. Okay, but the bottom line is, uh, mess around with stuff like that, try to find something that works. Okay. So I need to do this for the other altitude bands as well. And so I could copy and paste that and then come in and change the numbers. Um, I'm not going to worry about putting exact numbers in here right now because this is just for the sake of demonstration. And uh, actually TH uh, was zero here because the temperature is uh, going to be uh, constant right there in that uh, area of the atmosphere in the tropopause okay? and then the area starts to increase above that as the solar radiation is ionizing the air the temperature actually increases up to a certain point and then it decreases uh, down until we get more towards uh, space okay so you need to go through uh, I didn't check these numbers and aren't right but you need to go through you need to put in good comments for them and everything like that make sure the comments are all lined up and all the stuff like that okay so uh, so, you know, now I've made a decision. I've decided that my code is going to be working in English engineering units, and I'm going to have the units in all of these comments. Uh, so, how do I handle it if the user uh, sends in uh, SI units in meters, and they ask for a thousand meters, but all my code is set up for feet? And this is why I set up my function with a variable called HN, because before I get to the actual... Um, meat of the function here where I start using altitudes I want to account for the fact that the user could have put in SI units and so I'm going to say if string compare I SI units so if the user put in if this is true that means the user put in SI units and in that case I want to say that my altitude H is equal to H in and now H in here is in meters, but I want the output from this to be in feet. So if I just convert it to feet, okay, if the only way I'll get into this if statement is if the user put in SI units. And then if this if statement executes, the user's input is going to go from uh, being a thousand meters to uh, coming out in feet. And I did this unit conversion backwards. If I have a thousand meters coming in, I'm going to have. 3,280 feet coming out. Okay. All right, so um, now the variable h contains the uh, number of feet, um, of the altitude in feet that is uh, compatible with the rest of my function. So uh, now I need to go through and, and I can't use h in here anymore. I need to actually use h. And so I need to go through and replace these with H's because now internally in my function I'm I could be using a different um, numeric value for altitude corresponding to my unit system. Okay. And again, the only way this is going to execute is if the user puts in um, SI units, either lowercase or capital. Okay, and that's kind of what step two was talking about here is... Um, uh, we use an if statement um, to de uh, determine this, and then we converted the altitude into to feet. And now that means I, I can't forget at the bottom of my code, right before this comes out, I'm going to need something else. I'm going to need the same if statement, because if this condition is true, I need to do something on the, in, uh, on the incoming side and something on the outgoing side. And on the outgoing side, I need to convert all outputs to... Uh, SI units, okay, and so I can't forget to to do that, and uh, and that's what this uh, step two C is talking about here, okay. All right, so now going back down to uh, the table here, I've got these constants in uh, a couple of my altitude bands. I can comment out this F for an F statement because I don't need that anymore, and now I'm going to need the equations for temperature pressure, uh, density, and uh, speed of sound, okay? So in my first altitude block here, I'll just 
come in and type in the temperature equation. So T equals T1 plus TH. And now this is the altitude that I'm at minus uh, the start of the altitude band H1, which in my case is defined in HB1. And now I've got the equation for temperature. Now I need the equation for pressure. So P, oops, P equals P1 times, and now I've got T divided by T1. And now I'm raising this to the power, and it's going to be a negative power. And I'd like to um, be really clear with parentheses, G divided by TH times R. And I'm going to suppress this output, and hopefully you see I've got a couple problems here. You know, G is not defined in my code, R is not defined in my code. So I'm going to need to come back uh, up somewhere, probably uh, right after my air checking would be a good part, uh, spot to define another uh, cell or section of the code where I initialize constants. And this is where I'd want to come in and say G equals 32.2 and R equals 17 and 16. And add some good comments to go along uh, with that. And I'm also going to need, you know, gamma for speed of sound, but you guys can do that on your own. Okay, so I've got the, the equation for temperature, the equation for pressure. I also need to output density and speed of sound out of my function. So I can put in an equation here for density. And density is just going to follow the perfect gas law equation, which is uh, right here in the handout, which is uh, P divided by RT. And uh, speed of sound, which I'm calling uh, A here, is the square root of gamma times R times T. Okay. And uh, if, if I'm confident that I've got these uh, equations correctly, uh, written incorrectly. I can test them. I can test them by uh, using F9 a lot. So, you know, I can come in here. I can F9 this stuff. So I've executed that. I've got these in my memory and I can execute my altitude band here. And now I can execute this uh, temperature thing. And I don't have an H defined. So just for the purposes of testing, I'm going to define an H and let's say it's equal to 1000 feet. Well, actually, let's, that, let's touch, test sea level first, so h equals 0, and then I'm going to F9 this part of my code, and um, it's throwing me in air here about uh, array indices, and that's because I'm rushing too fast, and um, it's thinking that th here is a function because I'm missing a multiplication sign, so this is why we test our code, this is why I test my code by using F9 a lot because it's just easier. So now I'll F9 again and look I get the sea level temperature back out. Now if I say H equals to a thousand and I run the same line of code again, that's my temperature and now I can pull out my standard atmosphere in the back of uh, Yakov's book or Brandt's book and uh, compare that and see if I'm right on at least I'm getting a number It looks reasonable. I can F9 my pressure line, and of course it's not recognizing G. So I need to come up here and uh, F9 these lines, and now try my pressure line, and I can compare that number to a reference, and I can try these two lines, and that's not going to work because I don't have gamma, uh, and I would need to define gamma here. So if I defined gamma, pretty confident that would work. So here's all the equations now for the first altitude band. And if I set up the constants right for the next altitude band, I can copy these equations into every altitude band that uses them. Not every altitude band has the same equations because the temperature is constant in some altitude uh, bands, um, and we need to account for that. So in the second altitude band, there's a different equation. So I could copy these into the third altitude band, though, that uses the same set of equations. But hopefully, uh, by now, you're starting to recognize that, hey, wait a minute, um, rho and speed of sound are the exact same equations, and I'm going to end up with those equations. Uh, th those equations are going to be the same regardless of what altitude band I'm in. If I'm in a constant temperature uh, altitude band, it's still going to be the same rho and speed of sound equations. So really, 
it would be a lot better for my code if I just took all of that stuff out and now I just have and paste them in after the um, L, if else if uh, block and now these equations only exist in one place and if it's possible for equations only to exist in one place then that's how you should do it because then it's easier to check to make sure that your equations are correct for all cases okay so that's pretty much what we had to do in uh, part two of the project. Uh, you need to uh, come in here and add in the code for converting your outputs to SI units. Um, need to get, I need to get rid of this stuff anymore because now I've actually got equations for pressure and temperature, so I don't need those dummy values anymore. And then I need to come back to my driver uh, script, and I need to... Uh, create some code here to spot check the results at a couple altitudes uh, and if I set up my code correctly again with defining an altitude calling my function um, I can actually go to publish here and publish it and try that and you'll see that the output of the function is published um, as a part of the PDF and um, that's basically a good way to record your results for this uh, part two so that's pretty much it for part two and I'll see you in class